I'm Lana Kelly and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak and today we're going to be talking to Doreen O'Connor and Doreen is a painter and uh, also does all sorts of other stuff, bow finishes, murals, furniture. Um, thanks for coming today Doreen. Thank you. It's a good opportunity so. Yeah, yeah. So Doreen you, you said that the work that we have on the wall right behind us is new work for you this year that um, you've done? Within the last year, yes. Uh -huh. Um, the one, the Beacon Falls and the, the view from Boscobel, um, I did last fall with a plein air group that I've joined. Uh huh. So th Just these are really local scenes that people might even be able to see. Yes. Yeah. 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 And are they, are they acrylic? Yes, they're acrylic. And then this little one here was the snow on Wednesday uh. last week. <laughs> I was really aggravated with snow, so I sat in my living room window and, and painted. That's on your farm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'd been wanting to, to get that bright green that the willows turn in the spring, so I grabbed that opportunity. Yeah. It's too cold to work outside. So. Yeah, that's true. So I, that's true. So when did you get started? Have you been painting long? Uh, yes. I was always drawing and painting as a kid, and, and my degrees were in art education. And I, I taught for a couple of years, but it wasn't satisfactory. You get the the bad jobs until you have experience, and then they tell you you have too much experience, you're too expensive, and they won't hire you. Yeah. So um, I worked in historic house museums for 20 years with painting on the side. And then um, 24 years ago, I started a decorative painting business doing, as you said, the faux finishes, murals, um, painted furniture, it's all kinds of things, which is what's so much fun about it. Yeah. I've never had to do the same thing twice. Something always a little bit different. Tell me about the murals. They're, they're um, at private houses or where Most do you do them? Most of them are private houses. I've done a couple in commercial spaces, um, but I know one I did in a restaurant that didn't last for six months. I drove by and saw my wall in the dumpster. Oh no! Uh, the, the restaurant had gone <laughs> oh, no. bust. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that's a little hard to take. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't the mural's fault, I don't think. Right. So. Right. And and what do people usually ask you to paint? Is it just runs the gamut or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I first started, it was in style to do a lot of borders and mm -hmm. things to pick up the fabrics in a room. Um, I haven't done any of those in a long time. But the murals could be, well, last summer I did for a bed and breakfast over near Mohonk Mountain House. She had a, um, a piece of a Chinese screen that had cranes in it. And so we did um, just cranes on a large triangular wall in the room. It wasn't a scene, but it was just a, a a grouping of uh -huh. um, Asian cranes, the beautiful white cranes with the red heads. Yeah. Um, my first reaction with the color of the wall was st uh, sandhill cranes, but the white ones looked better. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done um, a couple of murals. Um, well, one I, I did a, a all the way around a room in a, a dining room in a house in Terrytown. Uh, that has a Hudson River view, and I did the Hudson River. Did you recreate the same view, or did you do a different view of the uh, river? Part of it is his view, but yeah. then it went farther up and down uh -huh. on either side, with some adding. He kept. I was hoping he was teasing when he said he wanted to put, you know, a dinosaur or a, you know, Loch Ness, Loch Ness monster in uh -huh. it. So I did some little drawings on masking tape and stuck them <laughs> onto the wall. And then he was so horrified, I really knew he was kidding. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I was glad I didn't paint them in. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I did a, a mural, um, another dining room one, but it was their backyard uh -huh. that wrapped around the dining room with the garden. And I have one I think is coming up. It's going to be... Um, the pond, it's going to be in a, a large powder room on the first floor in a big renovation. Uh, the pond on the property with the, the four boys playing ice hockey. Their children? Yeah. Oh, nice. 
So if they still want winter after the winter we just had. Yeah, <laughs> it was challenging, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it keeps changing. I sort of, my slogan for the painting business is if it doesn't move, I've probably painted on it. Yeah. Uh, that includes a fiberglass cow. Oh, really? Red, white, and blue yeah. with gold stars. Was that for an installation or was it for people? It was for a private home. Yeah. They'd had it for quite a while, didn't know what to do with it, just this big white fiberglass cow like yeah. the, the bulls in Wall Street. And, yeah. yeah. But right after 9-11, they wanted red, white, and blue and, and stars. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, was, it has lived outside, so I've had to go back you know, three-year intervals and freshen up the paint. Touch it up. Two of the kids are now gone from home, so the cow has gotten to move inside their space for in the den. Uh. <laughs> so I don't think I have to repaint her. Yeah, you might not see her again. <laughs> yeah. Has, has anybody ever asked you for something that you just said, oh, no, no? Yes, nudes tickling each other in the dining room. Uh. I just, no, I said, no, I don't think that's where I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so did they have you do something else, or did they find no, another painter, we, you think? I'm not even sure he was serious, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. um, one time I was asked to do a painting of one of the superheroes, um, you know, with guns blazing, you know, and oh, it, yeah. just, it was just one of those things that should be on black velvet. Yeah. It was just, it was so awful. I did it because I needed the money really badly, but I wouldn't sign it. Oh, really? <laughs> It, it seems, <laughs> well, we knew that was going to Oops. happen. <laughs> oh, dear. No harm done to the painting. Nope. Ah, which is a beautiful Hudson River scene. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And where is it on the Hudson? It's uh, the view from Boscobel. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Um, so you do a lot of plein air painting? Um, I'm getting into a lot more of it. Um, Joining that group has been good for me to, you know, motivate me to, to get out and do more, and I, I really like to do it. Yeah. Um, for several years, I was going up to Monhegan Island, Maine, for a week in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go the last couple of years. One year, one of those years, because I had the opportunity to go to Trinidad and Tobago for a family wedding, and I painted nice. a little bit yeah. every day there. Yeah. And that was plein air stuff. Yeah. Um, working in the rainforest is interesting. Paint doesn't dry real quickly in the rainforest. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like working in oil. I have to be careful where I put my hands. Because mm -hmm. working with acrylic, I'm used to the things drying very quickly. Right, And right. you can touch them mm -hmm. soon. You can't in very high humidity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could you do a watercolors there with that? I did, yeah. yeah. They're, they travel easier, so uh -huh. I mostly did watercolors but I took my acrylics too. Yeah. So do you see any new direction in your work or bigger, um, smaller, more of the same? Um, yeah, I've been working a little smaller um, and I've changed to mostly working on panels rather than um, canvas because having worked on walls for 20 years, the bounce of a canvas is really irritating to me oh, now really? when, I, when I'm painting and the, the canvas fights with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need something solid. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm enjoying using um, a toned background, which I hadn't done much of before, not in years. And um, it's bringing out a different color sense. I'm not sure what you mean by toned background. Um, you can see a little bit of this coming through. It, was, it wasn't a white background. Uh -huh. I had done a wash of a, of a light uh, sienna okay. on it first, um, and it, it it's very it's very nice to work on that. And when I was working in Maine with the group of artists that were um, that I was staying with in Monhegan, so many of them were working on toned canvases, mm -hmm. and it, it ties things together beautifully. Yeah, um, and so I started experimenting with it, and I've liked that. Does it change the colors a little bit as you layer them on top um, of it? Particularly, I paint with my paints very thin. Uh -huh. So yes, yeah. you, you see it through mine. Um, but it also, you know, in the little spaces that don't get covered, 
uh, you see that. You know, yeah. Some artists use a very dark background and then you, you get these little dark lines that uh -huh. show. Um, I like the, the Sienna. It just sort of works well for mm -hmm. my work. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you like people to take away from your work when, when they see it? Um, I like it when they there's a little nostalgia, something that they see in it that reminds them of, of a place or, or something. Mm -hmm. um, because that's kind of the feeling that I have when I'm doing it. I, almost all of my work is nature inspired. Um, even if I've done a thing of rusty anchor chain, yeah. you know, it's yeah. on, a, on a sandy beach background or on rocks or something. So nature is there in all of them in one way or the other. Yeah. And um, you work out of your studio in Pokraig, and you'll be doing the Open Studio Tour, the Art East Open Studio yes. Tour this year? Yes, mm -hmm. and I've, I've really enjoyed that experience with the, the group of artists there. Um, you can't work with other artists without learning from them, mm -hmm. um, sharing experiences, and just, you know, you can always use more friends. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so if somebody came to your studio, what could they expect to see? Um, everything from a, a very large, I think it's 46 by 48 inch canvas of a blue heron uh -huh. hunting to smaller pieces like this. Um, this. This actual studio room with cans and cans of paint because mm -hmm. of the faux finishes and I use a lot of, you know, house paint things in the murals yeah. because of the, the sizes of the walls. So to go from painting all the way around a room to doing something small with considerably smaller brushes. Yeah, yeah. When I first started doing murals and, you know, my biggest brush was maybe a, a number eight, um, I use a lot of sponges <laughs> to <laughs> fill in backgrounds. Um, it makes good texture when you're doing trees and things, but That's it also true, fills, yeah. fills space a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. makes it go a lot faster. Yes. And what about furniture? Do you do faux finishes on furniture? And I do some faux finish, finishes on it, or, you know, sometimes it's a complete change from, um, there was one piece of uh, a vanity piece that I did that was black with gold trim and did it to look like it was burled walnut. Oh, really? So that was quite a nice, a yeah. nice change yeah. and um, certainly was more subtle in the room than black and gold. Yeah. Um, furniture, I've done a lot of children's room furniture, but again, that doesn't seem to be as popular as it was or different market that I'm in now or whatever. Right, right. Right. Maybe there's just not as many kids right now. Oh, I think there's lots of kids, yeah. but it's just that they've... Well, there's a lot of painted children's furniture available out yeah. there. And a lot of stencils and things that mm -hmm. you can do on your own. That's true. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doreen, we're out of time. Oh. So, um, thank you so thank much you for coming. Much. And uh, it was great sitting and talking and learning a little bit more about what you do. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.